In the previous video, we proved a residual theorem by shrinking in contour, so nothing was left except for infinitesimal circles surrounding the poles. And this way we achieved a great simplification, culminating in the proof of the theorem. But there is one more way to compute the integral, and it is as important as the previous one. So now suppose we have a closed contour integral of a function meromorphic in a complex plane. And the contour will be gamma. and the corresponding integral. But now, instead of shrinking the contour, we will try to extend it indefinitely. Well, naturally, as we do so, we will encounter singularities positioned outside the contour. Our final goal is to turn this contour into an infinite circle. But as a result of contour sketching singularities, we obtain a more interesting curve. Well, first of all, it consists indeed of an infinite circle, but also of a number of infinitesimal circles passed in the clockwise direction and also a set of pairs of straight line segments stretching from these circles to infinity. As before, we argue that the integrals along these infinitely closed segments passed in opposite direction cancel each other. Now, the integral along the infinitesimal circle surrounding the pole was computed in the previous video and we proved that it was equal to 2 pi i times the residue of the function at a particular pole. But here we have to put an additional minus sign, because unlike in the previous video, these integrals are taken in the clockwise direction. So in the end, we obtain the following interesting result. Our initial integral is equal to minus 2 pi i times the sum of the residues of our function outside this contour, and plus the integral along the infinite circle. And now let's discuss this integral. To compute it, we need to figure out the behavior of our f of z function at large values of z. And we make a corresponding expansion. And in general, it will have the following structure. The sum from over n from minus infinity to infinity, cn times z to the power of n. So now, if this expression has only a finite amount of terms, so it looks like cn times zn, plus c n minus 1 times z to the power of n minus 1, and so on. Then they say that the function has a pole of order n at infinity. And such an expansion for large values of z is called the Laurent expansion of the function at infinity. Now we take our integral. But as we proved earlier, all those integrals around this circle will disappear with the only exception of the term with power n equals negative 1. And in this case, this integral will be equal to 2 pi i. So in the end, our integral along this large circle will be equal to 2 pi i times c negative 1. And so we have quite an interesting result. Our integral is equal to minus 2 pi i times the sum of the residues of the function outside this contour plus 2 pi i times this expansion coefficient c negative 1 at infinity. And from aesthetic considerations, this coefficient c minus 1 with negative sign is called the residue of the function at infinity. And this is the formal definition. And remember that the residue at infinity is just a clever way of expressing the integral over an infinite circle. And finally, we can formulate a beautiful complementary to our initial residue theorem. Now, the full residue theorem goes as follows. The integral of a meromorphic function along a closed positively oriented contour is equal to 2 pi i times the sum of the residues of the function inside this contour or minus 2 pi i times the sum of the residues of the function outside this contour, including the residue at infinity. Now, the theorem, as I stated, has an amazing consequence. From what we see, we immediately conclude that the sum of the residues of a meromorphic function in the entire complex plane is equal to zero if we take into account the residue at infinity. As a specific example, let's consider the integral from our previous video. So we integrated function f of z, which was 1 over z times z squared plus 1, over contour c4. Well, in our previous video, we have to compute the residues at all the poles inside this contour. But now we can take a different path. 
we see that all the poles of the integrand are positioned inside this contour. And that's why it's way easier to express the same integral at the minus 2 pi i times the sum of the residues outside the contour, because there are none, and the only possible residue would be at infinity. So it's equal to minus 2 pi i times the residue of f of z at infinity. So let's build a run expansion of our function at infinity. So it basically corresponds to the expansion in powers of 1 over z. To do so, we treat 1 over z as a small parameter and expand in it. So f of z is equal to 1 over z. And we factor out z squared from the braces to obtain z cubed times 1 plus 1 over z squared. And treating 1 over z squared as a small parameter, we make a geometric expansion to obtain 1 over z cubed minus 1 over z to the power of 5, and plus so on. And we see that there is no 1 over z term, because the function just decays too fast. And this way, the residue at infinity is equal to 0. And so the integral itself is 0. And of course, one could see that the residue of the function at infinity is 0 from the very start. We just need to figure out the asymptotic behavior of our function at infinity, and we see that it decays as 1 over z cubed. So no 1 over z term. So in the end, if you have some experience with residues at infinity, sometimes we just don't need to write anything to compute integrals. We just figure out that there are no poles outside the contour. Then you're thinking a little bit about the asymptotic of your function. Usually it's clearly seen from the very start. And if your function decays faster than 1 over z, then the corresponding residue at infinity is 0, and the whole integral is 0. And this completes our discussion of the residue theorem. I hope you enjoyed it, and till our next video.